Hello, hello, hello. Right. I'm going to do something completely different today. You may remember that I've spoken about build space in a few videos now. I've also mentioned it on Don't Be A Doorstop, which is our podcast around mindset, purpose, and entrepreneurship. I thought today I would go and review some of the projects that have been submitted or some of the demos that have been submitted. I've wanted to do this for a few weeks. Then sad news come through that the whole build space organization is shutting down, which is such a shame because I think this model of nights and weekends is so clever. Um, so, um, community driven, uh, it's a shame that it's going to go. So I'm like, I wonder if there's some iteration of it that could carry on going and it is inspiring, um, to kind of host something like this and run something like this. Of course, there's lots of stuff that goes on behind the scenes, um, which I'm sure makes it much, much harder than just the nice polished view that you see, um, on the kind of like the outside looking in. But anyway, I was about to load up the site cause I've been not getting round to doing this video. And then I reload the site and it jumps over to their like exit from the founder saying like, this is why we're shutting it down. And I thought I'd lost the ability to do my video that I wanted to do. Thankfully I looked in my history and I was just loading up the wrong URL. <clears throat> so I have found it. So I've, um, found the database or the, like the place that they're documenting all of their demos and I'm going to through, they've got, they've got like four. I don't know what they call them, um, like groups or like teams or houses maybe, or clans, I, I, I don't know, four, four teams, red, blue, yellow, and green. Um, they all stand for something, but I don't know what the names are. And, uh, I thought I would share essentially, well, I'll go through and find some interesting ones and let's see how I got on. I'll at least do one of each. I might come back and do more at the end. Um, so if I share my screen, um, I can get into, get into this, right. All right. So here we've got build space. And if you go to sage.buildspace.so, so slash demos, I'm not sure how long this is still going to be around for, but you can get all their demos of the ones that have submitted for season five. And, um, like I was saying, there's multiple teams. So if you jump across the, the top here, uh, you'll see, we've got, um, like a red, blue, yellow, and green. And you see the names Avrold as the, the green team. Um, and it loads up with a bunch of demos. Now, unfortunately, because it doesn't load up all of them all at once, I can either scroll for something or, um, kind of like wait until it's all loaded. Cause I can't command F or anything like that. Um, because it's all lazy loading in the second parts. But what I thought if I put in UX in here, cause that's something that I have more interest in, um, that it'll give me a subset and hopefully it'll show me some things that have been, um, tagged as UX, which will be cool. So it'll be mostly like apps and so forth. And there'll be a mixture of AI and horse fit. I can also do uh, categories, but I'll do broad. And I thought I would just go through and just give my, um, one thing I, I like about it and maybe one thing I would change about it. Um, cause it's all about being positive. Cause I think this is phenomenal, um, that somebody has gone through this, um, and, and done it in this way. Right. So instantly I was like looking through and this looks interesting. So we've got charts and a face. So it's obviously tracking his face. And then I read this guided meditation, which provides the right instruction at the right time. So I'm going to jump into this one first and let's see what's what so i'm hopefully i can just play it straight here and not click learn more because it'll take me somewhere else because i don't think i can open this in a new window can i no oh so the the back pages might not even work for any of this stuff let's let's hope that this plays and, and we'll see if it um is this going to work in full screen i'm not sure if it even is will it maybe it will let, let me just double check that I'm streaming the right page. So if I jump in here, yes, cool. So you guys can see this and hopefully I'm really hoping that you guys will be able to hear this too. It's quite quiet, but just in case I'll also voice it over and maybe I'll turn captions on as well. So it's a new app, AI guided meditation with real time feedback. Using biometrics. Let me show you how it works.
Okay, let's pause here. So I've got a duration, um, 10 minute duration, loving kindness, breathing, counting, body scan. And what's this third field here? Comments, current goal, start meditation. I wonder if I actually play, play on this. Okay. So there's a, a bot speaking as I like, take a deep breath and close your eyes when you're ready. Interesting. Cool. So let, let's go back. This is really clever. So it's using some LLM to figure out uh, breathing rate, heart rate, and movement based on the image. I don't know how they're working out heart rate um, from the image, but that's kind of cool. It would make absolute sense if there was some Apple watch integration, uh, to be able to do that stuff. And this is a body scan. Oh, okay. I can actually try it out. Let's see if I can, um, he's very cleverly put in the, uh, the address in the, um, the top here. So if I go, uh, um, and, uh, oh. this might not work cause it'll probably take over my wrong camera, but let's see. Oh, classic. I was hoping to use it without having to log in. Uh, request an invite. Okay. Sadly can't try it out right now live, but I really like this. I guess, um, one thing is like, what, what, one thing I like about it is, um, that it has some data to be like, figure out if you are calm or not calm. Um, if you are focused or not focused. So I think that's really cool that it's highlighting some of that stuff. If it had a, an integration with your smartwatch to have that and it could potentially vibrate rather than speak at you or, or whatever um to kind of can't because i i would say like if if it was like vibrating as like a you wanting the vibration of your um hand to like be really calm as if it was like mimicking a heartbeat and it like helps you focus. And then if you're not focusing the vibration in your arm is um, increasing or something, that'd be kind of like cool. But yeah, I think that's great. The only, the only thing is you don't see any of those stats where you've got your eyes closed, but you can see them after the fact. But um, I think it's a, a great idea. One, one thing would be like, how could you um, somehow uh, track emotion? So if somebody is frowning or smiling while this is going on, uh, cause chances are you're, you might, it might be a guided meditation, but like, oh, you're going down this babbling brook or whatever. And I assume that you'd be able to see some sort of emotion in somebody's face. Cause they're, they're frowning less smiling more. Um, and I think that'd be something cool to, to add to it. But, um, yeah, I, I think it's a really cool little idea. So you'd have some sort of monthly subscription. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll see if there's a, like a, I can spot the business model monthly subscription to like calming you down. You subscribe to this and then hopefully over time, like if you're in a stressed period, you'd log in be like, cool, I'm stressed. Give me like a 10 minute calm down. And then you'd go from frowning and like faces all screwed up to be like relaxing and your watch would be like, cool. Your heart rate's much better and all the rest of it. So that was a cool idea. Um, let's jump to the yellow, I'm going in reverse for this. Um, but -da -ba -ba -dum. hopefully the UX one is, uh, the UX filter is still on. I'll just scroll down a few pages. It's a bit slow loading for me. But I think it's because it's got just YouTube pages, uh, YouTube videos embeds on all of them. 
I want to see some images. I'm always looking for like images of apps rather than reading the words. See, I'm su I'm such a visual person. I'm like looking for like the interesting app, uh, interesting app or something. Okay, I like Dragon Ball, so I'm sucked into that one. So that'll be the one that I go to so far. If there's nothing else that's like an app design. Mm. Okay, we've got an app here. Analytics for your resume. Okay, I'm going to go for the Dragon Ball one. Full screen, baby. Okay, hopefully, I don't know if you can actually hear the video. So let, let's pause there for a sec. <laughs> so uh, Wendy's created a an app that unites all enemy levels, lol, captions are wrong, anime levels. These are automated captions. And you can see in the app here that it's like, you can have your profile, you can battle, that's interesting. Completed, watch. I don't know what that word says. Queued. Oh yeah, groups. So you can have different groups that you can join and discuss the actual episodes or the characters and so forth. So there's channels in there. It's really cool. Like a chat. What was that screen that just came up? Oh, what was what was that? I really like. Yeah, this one, what was this? So this is like, oh yeah, don't add spoilers, that makes sense. Yeah, and they have different channels, which is cool. Explore page with news, anime news. And like look at different animes that you might be interested in. Characters, where to watch it. Okay, so this is the points battle stuff. So you go out into the real world and gain gain points for Okay, cool. So it's just like an AR type box that you tap to open and you gain points. I wonder what the points actually do. Nice. Awesome. Nice. Just talking about marketing. So she created a Discord channel for the app. To gain traction. Tuk tuk. Cool. So like a community, an anime community. I, I think this is great. So one thing I really like is any sort of community around a common interest is always a good thing to do. And especially anime, I'm sure there's 
well, thousands, hundreds of thousands of people that love it, all in different places, all in different countries and so forth. You have things like Comic-Con, which is great, but that only happens once a year and in a particular lo location. So you, if you could have like some idea of where these groups were, so you could have a like a local city or region or area group, then you could basically meet up with them. So I think I really like the where to watch it. Cause if I was coming in and I was very interested in particular, like um, a particular anime uh, franchise, could there be another franchise that I would also be interested in? So suggestions of other franchises that are similar um, that are also really, really good. And um, I think as well, watch parties disney plus has this like ability to combine even though we're not together we can watch it together and it kind of like brings up comments but i think that's a bit like ropey but i, I wonder if there's just like real events like real events that you would do um which are like watch parties um where you would watch different episodes uh, of it to get like the real life because you can see that it's digital and then adding in this map side of stuff so it's trying to combine the real world with like the actual digital groups but could you have like watch parties in different cities and and stuff like that um or um yeah because i i guess when you watch stuff sometimes you just want to watch it and not have people comment through it so sometimes combine like sync watching stuff doesn't always um work because you're trying to watch it while also type a comment about what you're watching um yeah i really like it really like the design as well so it's cool any sort of like community, like a niche community. And to be honest, like anime and stuff is not niche really. It's pretty like huge. So I think that's cool. Cool. So we've had a, an anime community app. We've had a meditation face tracking, helping you to calm down, which is kind of cool. Oh, I didn't spot that app as well. Cool. Well, on to the next one. I'll do one of each. Blue. Uh, and I think here as well, like, um, it's interesting how ideas come about essentially by focusing on solving problems. So loneliness is a big issue. The community is a great thing. So it can solve or be uh, something that helps or, or, or thwarts loneliness by connecting you with people that like stuff, uh, the same stuff as you, which is great. Um, and then the face stuff i guess it's like the a like really when you listen to um so you listen to guided meditations but you know being able to customize the guided meditation could be really interesting so if it was aware that you had a very specific need of um something bad has happened like for example you've just lost a a big project where you've spent like months and a bunch of money on trying to pitch the project or something and it could add that in it uh, in, into it. So, um, but yeah, like, I guess what problem is it solving is, is more so, um, just helping you to actually calm down within guided meditation. So it's, um, it, it's not so clear because there is guided meditation, I guess it's just enhancing it, uh, to some respects. And, and the problem is people are stressed, right. And they don't know how to calm themselves down, but, um, yeah, so I, I think it's good, but it's, it's a little bit, less, it's more vague um in specific because it's uh, like an enhancement uh, to stuff right blue category um uh did i put ux in yeah cool i know this has given me a subset of a subset so there'll be less people in this um like ux specific part but let's see but yeah feel free if you're interested in seeing any of these stuff there's hours worth data that's probably days worth to be honest right i'm kind of looking for an app okay testimonies are not not so interested Oh, okay, cool. An app that helps build habits and fight addictions. This just sounds interesting. Let's go. Can 
computer science student in Morocco. Cool. So habit and addiction tracker. Focus of being user friendly and easy. So th this makes sense, right? People, the problem here, solving this problem, I guess the problem of the other one is like, people don't know how to calm themselves down. <laughs> people don't how, know how to deal with stress. And um, uh, and it's kind of giving people the tools to calm down. And in this one, I like this because it's uh, like, not only is it uh, habits, but it's also addictions. So it'd be really interesting. So we're all aware that we have um, bad habits or struggle to have uh, a routine, um, which effectively means that you're not as effective as you should be. And then um, addictions is depending on the severity of the addiction. That makes sense as well. It just is a, a blocker to a better life for yourself. So he built all of it himself. Oh, I can't move this, which is a shame. Oh, 24 minute, is it, is it a 24 minute thing? Oh, it's a long time. Okay, simple had it addiction, straight to the point. So I, uh, you can tell my attention span's already gone. Straight to the point. Inspiration is Duolingo Habitica. No, I don't. I'm going to have to speed this up. Okay, habit builder. It's like a game, so gamifying habits and stuff. So this is habit, habica, habica, habitica. And then Duolingo. So he likes Duolingo. Okay, so have a track it and Duolingo. He's built it. I wanna see it. Okay. Okay, so habits, daily log and streak. Okay, design. See, funny, I, I didn't look at the time that the video was. I want to see it right. Let's go, let's go, let's see. It's so a checkpoint, track habits. Yep. Okay, so you've got habits and addictions. So you click into habit. One, one thing it doesn't I thought that these were just um, like lists of stuff. I didn't realize, I was like, where do I now do something? So it's not clear where I meant to do, if there was like an arrow or, or some sort of direction to be like, these are actual clickable and it's not just info cards. Oh, okay, yep. It's flashing because I've got it on two times speed.
Okay. Okay, so I mean this is like so difficult to build something like this in the in the few weeks that they have. So again, kudos on being able to build something quickly, but I think it misses like like how how are you gonna help me? So so this is just a an addictions tracker, but really it's a case of like how is it gonna like actually help? So I like the angle i like the idea of helping somebody um with positive habits and remove negative habits like stop smoking or smoke, stop drinking but it feels like because of the duolingo and the other one being like very gamified there's no like gamify aspect in here streak is cool but it's not as obvious uh, as you as you'd like and i wonder if there was some sort of like community factor i mean they've got like um, he's written here, obviously friends listen, daily challenges and stuff, but how could you get that in really, really quickly? Like, could you have, um, like rather than having custom tasks, could you opt in to, uh, these people are stopping smoking and basically you would go in and be like, cool. So there's somebody in here right now and they've got a streak of 20 and you'll come in, um, and you've got like, you start your streak of one. So then it wouldn't matter that you've joined in at 20 because somebody's ahead of you. You, you keep going because who knows, maybe that person on 20 might accidentally like have a day that they don't do it of some sorts and then their streak resets or, or something. So I'd be like, could you opt in to challenges or create challenges that other people opt into? And that would be a way of having the accountability thing. Because I think accountability is one motivating factor to stopping an addiction or creating a habit. And then, yeah, you could have a bunch of other custom ones, but maybe for the addictions one, it'd be like opting in, um, to, to something. So like opting into the, and then, and then you could be like, there are a thousand people st uh, like trying to stop, um, or like decrease their sugar intake. So then you join it and then everybody is trying to do it. So you uh, have a sense of like, um, togetherness with it. So one, really like the fact that it's focused on addictions as well as like positive habits. Um, cause I think there are like, that's great. Uh, I don't, don't think people speak, they speak a lot about to-do lists, but not about like removing things or stopping doing things, which I think is really cool. But yeah, one like improvement would be, could you have default addictions that you could jump into? Um, and then you could see, oh, there's a thousand people that are trying to stop uh, smoking and you'd have a leaderboard straight away. So then it would be a, a, a gamified side. Um, I guess that's where the daily ch challenges would, um, come in, but yeah, cool. That's really interesting. Really interesting. Right. So we've had a face, facial recognition one. We've had an addictions app and then we've had a community, um, an anime community, which is cool. Right. Let's go to red. Time one. Oh, that's half an hour. Yeah, that was a long video. Maybe I'll double check the video time so I don't go into it too much. I like the look of this. Professional journey. I'm not so interested in that. Personal finance. Self-driving. Oh, there's far less in this one that's uh, selected as UX. This looks very interesting. I think that's got my attention. Right, let's go this ninja cat. Okay, so it's a game that's controlled by your voice.
Okay, that was very, very quick. So how is it co-op? So I assume that other people are fighting alongside you against these monsters. You know what I want to bring back? I want to bring back webcam stuff. So one, I really like these concepts. And obviously this is like, um, this looks like some sort of like mid journey esque conceptual images that they've come up with, which are cool. I also like this ninja cat. Again, it looks like they've come up with an image and then just like mapped it to a 3D. a 3D thing, like a flat image of a cat and just mapped it uh, to a thing, which is kind of cool. I, I like it, but I wish it was not just voice, but like hand movements. So I would like to bring back the use of webcams and <laughs> the use of like hand action moving. So yes, we've got AR and yes, you could be in. Uh, well, yes, you've got VR, sorry. And yeah, you could be in a helmet and you can be moving your arms and stuff to uh, to do it. But because we've got, um, I'm kind of like running off the facial recognition stuff, because we've got an ability to recognize depth and, and movement and stuff, could you not be like moving your hands or like, and also shouting? Um, so if you said a particular word and did the movement, uh, then it would trigger, trigger that movement uh, to some extent. So I'd be like, could you also do hand movements and also it's kind of like good exercise. So if you were like run forward or whatever, and you started moving your hands, like that would be a, a cool way to, to do something. But yeah, nice. I don't know what problem it's solving except for entertaining, but, um, and obviously there's going to be a narrative cause it's kind of like a history lesson almost if it's, uh, if it's, um, situated in, um, Japan. So I like the theme of it. So yeah, like the graphics, like the, th like the theme the style, um, the treatment, could there be more to just the, the words? Could it be hand gestures, um, as well? That would be my improvement. Um, cool. Right. I'm going to go back to green and I'm going to go broad. Let's see what comes up. I'll do one, one through on all of them. So. I think the one that I'd actually use so far, the one that I'd actually use out of all of them is um, the guided meditation one. So even though I was kind of like, oh, what's the problem is it solving? <laughs> um, I would probably use the guided meditation app, um, especially if it was able to tell me, oh yeah, you now are calm. Um, not that I get stressed too often, but. Right, I'm gonna be biased and look for like an app looking one. Uh, you know what? I'm live streaming at the same time. So I'm running the Don't Be A Doorstop TV channel <laughs> at the same time, which is why my fan is, uh, my laptop fans come on. So I'm not going to click on this, even though this is a good one, because I know what this is. I've seen this one before, but you guys go and find um, this Insta camera app for yourselves. It's a, a really good one. Invoice and accounting, music festival apps, yeah, better help. Okay, cool. I've used better help, so I'll be able to actually see if this is actually better. Let's go live. Oh, yeah. Okay, girlfriend and him spent time together. Couples therapy. Matcha. Perfect therapist. 
Yes. And you're essentially guessing. Mm, the style doesn't fit. That's a good idea. So the first one about finding people that suit, uh, like finding people generally that would match your need makes sense. However, the second one is like the, the, the style, your, your like preferences of style. I don't think preferences of style is actually, um, oh, I'm going glitching here. The, the preferences of style is, is documented anywhere. Because again, why, uh, like, could it be that a, a group therapy thing is, is, is more appropriate? And so, for, you know, here he was saying one-on-one, -on -one, hoping to group, online, remote, prefer in person. This is fine, but I'd be like, is there some other way it's more this one, isn't it? Yeah, like structure and goal, explore my thoughts and emotion. Because one preference that I have is sometimes I want the um, therapist to actually feed back and give back perspective um, and give back their opinion. Whereas a lot of the time, that isn't something that they would do. Uh, they, would, they would more so allow you to kind of answer your own questions. So I think it's that kind of stuff that you'd want. It's the nuance of that being articulated in an app, which I think is cool. So I really like that. that approach and i wonder whether or not you could bake in people's personalities so if you are somebody that likes order your chances are you're going to really hit this one so is there some way that you could ask just some four or five personality questions to then help show you what type of therapy would be best for you with the intricacy of like how like those sessions would go about because you were saying in the video how sometimes they have the first session and they don't vibe it Cause you build a scraper to create um, things. That makes sense. Interesting. So yeah, basically helping people find therapists because yeah, it is difficult because there's too much choice and um I, I wonder whether or not, yeah, it's, it's just trying to get rid of the decision fatigue with trying to get help for yourself. So especially in this case, couples, um, couples therapy makes sense. So I like it. I, I do wonder whether or not these things are, um, like more and more being able to have a, a bot that you could speak to, which is the therapist. And especially if it was, um, couples therapy. Could you have one bot that you would speak to and the, the one partner speaking to, and then your the other partner speaking to the other bot at different times? Cause I think with couples therapy, potentially, um, there's initially probably like the arranging a time where both of you can be available for this thing, especially if you're, if you do or do not live together. And also maybe you'd be more honest if the person wasn't listening. So I'd be like, could you, I guess I'm kind of like, why not build a, it's very uh, respectful to find, help you find the right therapist, but I'm like, could there not be just a couples therapy app uh, where I speak to it for a bit, Kim speaks to it for a bit, and then it highlights the kind of like the differences and helps us, like gives us games and tasks to, to overcome the challenges or whatever. But um, yeah, so I'd be like, really good that you're helping people find, helping people find therapists, but could you basically build a therapy app where you do it for yourselves through the bot <laughs> rather than suggest and uh, obviously upsell them to a person right upsell them to a uh, to a human cool i like that let's go to pink pink why does i say pink sometimes when i'm tired i'll say the wrong color yellow yellow Uh, 
okay, I'm going in here. So um, we aim to enable artists to write, collaborate, and share lyrics. Uh, it's a shame it's a bit blurry, but that's fine. So it's just because I'm um, full screening it. So it's an, it's an app to um, facilitate collaboration of songwriters. Oh, here we go. Cool. So they receive invites. So it's essentially Google Docs for songs or creating songs, which makes sense. So how do I find people? So they had discovery call. So again, great community driven people wanting to collaborate together. Amazing. The one thing that you would probably want is like, um, gen generally, this is my take on it. The more people you work with, sometimes like the slower the the production of something is um so that's one thing with like how would you kind of so if you are collaborating with somebody how do you like continue to progress something that you don't have just a bunch of collaborations that never get finished because that would probably be whack um another thing is like it's great that people across the globe but i don't how do i tell that how can i tell that they're across the globe and also i think what's more interesting is like with generally people are, are becoming more like bilingual trilingual especially if we think of like um like blending in like spanish and english into songs or if you blend in korean and english into songs so if i was a predominantly like english speaking songwriter could i come in here and find somebody in korea south korea to be able to like add in korean lyrics um, and collaborate in that way, which would be more interesting. Um, so yeah, could you have some sort of like time boxed collaboration? So really like it, really like the idea of collaborating, AKA Google docs with people that are songwriters across the globe. Great. The improvement would be, I can't see where they are and I probably want to collaborate with people that speak different languages and all the rest of it. And could it be that there's some improvement to like, how do I, not get this just like grinding to a halt and I have like thousands of started collaborations, but they don't finish. Um, and then maybe people would be more interested. So maybe it's like this collaboration has a 24 hour clock and you start it. And then after 24 hours, like it, it like stops. So then, then you're like, cool, I'm just committing 24 hours or I'm committing 48 hours to do a project, um, like time box to creativity. So I think that'd be like, cool. So then, it would have like momentum to it because with these communities, how do you build momentum? Oh, sorry. With these collaborations, how do you build momentum and get them to complete the collaboration? Um, cool idea though. It's good. Songwriters are kind of like forgotten about, so it's good. All right, let's jump over to blue. Probably going to hit an hour in this video. It's cool. Again, all this stuff is great for like, if you dry of like, if you can't come up with ideas or, or, or 
don't any don't know any problems to solve. Just seeing somebody else solving it kind of, kind of spurs um, ideas because I definitely think the the one idea that's really interesting out of all the stuff I've seen so far is the um, not the habits, the addictions, like building a community of people trying to uh, kind of rid themselves or get free from addictions. And that would be like in community, doing it in community. Um, so could you have like a streak of people that have not drunk or people that have not smoked um, or people that have not ate a bunch of chocolate or sugar or something um, or biting their nails or not, and that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, that would be really, really cool. Really cool. I've just done blue, haven't I? Yeah, I think so. Cool. On to red. You know, I might do another round because I'm I'm enjoying just the idea for IDC. Okay, I'm sorted. This is the one I'm going to watch. I saw a robot and I'm like, cool. Anybody that's doing like hardware based things and this stuff is uh, is going to be interesting. Oh, the background music's too loud. Can't hear. What you see? Okay, uh, this is dope. So this looks like a robot that I could actually put together. It looks like a robot that's like connects, you know, the like Lego, you do Lego for a certain amount of time. And then once you get to like a teenage year, you start moving on to connects. This looks like somebody could actually put this together, actually build this for themselves. It says it's less than a thousand pounds. Cool. Like that'd be cool. Obviously it's gigantic because he's like, it's probably the same. It was wider than him. Is um, I know it's on some sort of table or something, but this would be really, really cool. Let's see more. Okay, so it's got vision to see the world in three D. Okay, you can move stuff in software. Okay, th see, this is where I was like, how the heck is this going to be done? Because if I have to control the robot, like, what am I going to do? To, like, cool, I'm upstairs and I have the robot sat downstairs to answer the door. So it like, I put on the gloves, open the door and let somebody drop a package and then it shuts the door. Like, but I would then still have to use the gloves, right? So the fact that he just said then a code in software, the movements. So all the hardware is open source, which is cool. Three months. I thought this thing was only six weeks. Cool. Awesome. Okay. That was dope. Love that. So let's, let's go back to this robot thing. I think all this robotic stuff is so cool. Um, Obviously it's stationary, so it has to be in one place, but I'm sure it won't take long until it can start moving around. But um, yeah, I'm always excited with robots and how people are using robots. I've got a robot Hoover. I don't use it anymore because I've got a step in the house. There's like a step, so I need to sort that. Um, but yeah, I wonder where, I, well, like, what problem would I solve? Like the one problem I have is in a two, in a two story house, going to answer the door for packages. Like I have to stop what I'm doing, go and answer the door. If there was a robot that could answer the door for me, that would be great. And all it would be doing is answering the door by like leveraging the door open, open enough for the parcels to be put inside. However, not enough for them to like break into the house as it were. Um, then that'd be great. So I would use this robot to open my front door when there's a delivery so they could put the delivery, um, inside. Um, 
Yeah, that was dope. Right, I'm going to go again because I'm liking this, like generic ones. So we've got some app stuff. We've got robot stuff. <clears throat> it's annoying I'm starting from the top all the time, unless it's loading up random, but maybe it's not. But yeah, look at all the people that have like done nights and weekends in season five. Supposedly they had a, uh, thousands of people at the very, very start. And then obviously through the weeks it whittles down and you only get past the the weeks if you actually produce out, like output of videos or demos and stuff. So by the end of it is uh, far less people involved. All right. Let's see what these load up as. I've probably gone too far because it's uh, taking too long to load. Is there anything loading up here? No, nothing is loading now. Oh, that's a shame. Okay, let's let's go. Classic. It crashed. I didn't even open that. Uh, why is that showing? But did it just did it just go wrong? Let's see if I can just reload the page and hopefully it all comes back together. All right, maybe the universe. Oh, Coca okay, Cool. Cool. Right. Okay, I just need to be patient with it, right? Again, I'm biased for thumbnails. A template for productivity and efficiency. Okay, let's see. You know, it's going to be awful if I've spoken over all of these videos and actually the video, the audio of the video actually was included in the recording. And that'd be annoying because I won't be able to transcribe any of the stuff that I've said, but maybe it might work. It might work. Let's see. It's like Skeletor or something. <laughs> is this okay so <laughs> I have no idea what's going on here okay I'll just interpret I'll just create an interpretation of this whole thing motivational speeches created by AI, which is obviously somebody saying you, you're not good enough to do this stuff, or like become a magic, I think you're saying like a magician or whatever, like magic things. And by the end of it, the person has motivated themselves through music, dramatic music and stuff to be like, I'm going to be a magician. Don't you worry. Don't I? Um, love all the anime type illustrations. I have no idea if that's copied or created from scratch. I, I don't know. I, I have no idea. I'm not going to click learn more because I don't want to navigate away, um, away from this page. It would be cool if there was a build a kind of like motivational speech tool where not only 
would it uh, be contextually relevant to what your challenge was? So like if we called him, th there was something called Mr. Motivator. Wasn't he like some exercise guy? Um, I'm going to write these ideas down because some of these are really, really good. So I think the addiction thing was um, one where you would join. This probably exists already. Uh, others. Uh, streaks. Community. Um, this this one is where you would essentially have Mr. Motivator. You would type in what you need to be motivated to do. And then it would AI generate, um, it would generate a video, audio, um, animation even is kind of cool of the start to finish where somebody's saying, ah, oh, you can't do this. And then by the end they do it. However, I, I would be like, if you just simplify it to a monologue <clears throat> and what would be even cooler is if you could have that monologue in your own voice. So could you build a, um, an AI voice matched to yourself and then say, this is my challenge. Give me a motivational speech. Uh, and it would create it for you, or you could select other people's voices, right? So the one thing that comes to mind straight away is, uh, working out, doing exercise. So could you have, um, some sort of like a general AI generated motivational speech from, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger or, um, the rock or something again, you would have to get them to license their voice and their image to you. Um, I know that Arnold Schwarzenegger has come out with his own app and sometimes he uses like Arnold's calling and then you like answer the phone and it's him speaking directly to you and giving you this motivational talk. So I'm like, could, could that be baked into app? And maybe you'd collaborate with celebrities to do motivational apps aligned with the thing. So kind of like, um, what's that thing? Not Canva cameo. So motivational cameo where you're having a tough time and you tap into all this, like, um, hustle, hustle porn stuff. And it's all aligned. Not only is it motivational, but you could have it as, um, what, is, what do you see? Um, what do you read? You read affirmations. Um, it's like an affirmation speech career. I mean, to be honest, you might be able to kind of like fudge it. I wonder if you could get away with fudging it to be like, have someone, somebody with like a, like a Arnold's, uh, Arnold's kind of like accent, but it's not Arnold and have somebody that looks like Arnold, but it's not Arnold. <laughs> but, um, yeah, some bots that you create and not bots some like AI characters that you create. That'd be kind of interesting. All right. So that was strange, but still led to somewhere interesting. I think I might be like scrolling over the same stuff as I, I thought saw before, but I did see this one and I didn't click on it and I'm interested just to, it's like a boring thing of like just seeing who turns up to class. But I just want to know if there's something interesting to this one. So class participation, see who turns up. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Let, again, I'm not sure if this is actually playing the audio, so I'll, I'll speak it back to you. Um, it's tracking attendance. You can also, uh, then bake that into like finding at risk students, which makes sense. You then, uh, have timed QR codes. So it's not as if it's the same QR code all the time. 
Um, and then you can do polls. One thing I would love to see is like, like, yes, call attendance is cool, but like, are people understanding what you're saying now? It could be like, it's done anonymously or not. And that, it comes down to like my whole, I think my personal philosophy of education is like this whole, like one lecture giving out to everybody just doesn't make sense anymore with AI and the, the, the far superior ability for AI to do mass personalization. It doesn't make sense to do lectures how we used to do them. So could it be that it also adds extra content to the lecture or could it be that you rank the lecture to be like, was this useful? Yes or no. Or why was it useful? Or like you get feedback or whatever, like there's that site where you rate teachers. Um, and I'm sure that's a popular site because they'll be like, oh no, this lecture is boring or whatever. And I'm like, I think it's good. Yes. It could be baked in with a bunch of biased. Um, but if somebody doesn't think they are a good lecturer, then you could be like, cool, let's get rid of them and choose somebody else. Right. To, um, to increase the the probability of them attending, which will increase their interest in the whole thing, which will increase the pass rate. Because ultimately, why do you care that they? Why do you care if they attend or not? It's because they're failing, essentially, right? Why do you care if they're failing? Because overall, your ranking will then go down. So really, you care about yourself. That's what the universities care about, right? So I'm like, how do you? Yes, cool. You care about yourself, about your optics. So how do you make it more interesting? Like, Hey, like, why don't you critique our lecturers? And if they're wrong lecturers, we'll hire new ones. I think that'd be far more interesting. Um, yeah, you could have it blended in with um, courses and stuff, but he, he, he then goes on to say they've actually started uh, using it for the last two trimesters somewhere. And you can see like a bunch of people have scanned it and logged in at a particular university. Um, which is cool. Cause like, I remember at university, there's some, there was some lectures at like 9am on a Friday, I think it was or a Thursday where we would just watch the original beauty and the beast. I'm like, what in the world are we doing? Why are we doing this? Not like course, uh, like, of course, like your year one is very generic. Everybody's like, it's a bit of film. It's a bit of animation is a bit of, um, interactive media, but like, I literally remember sleeping in those cause dark room watching a film, you're going to sleep. Like there's nothing to do about that. So, so yeah, I don't know how a QR code cool. I'll scan the QR code, but how does that, how do you now know that I like know stuff? Cause I might be turning up, but I literally haven't got a clue what's going on. Um, but really like QR codes to increase interactivity and a byproduct of that is that you then know attendance would be more interesting rather than it specifically being kind of like see who shows up in the class as like physical, like physically. Headcount.live is a good URL though. It's a great URL. Cause I'm like, maybe, maybe I don't know. Maybe that is a problem that like people aren't turning up to lectures, but I mean, isn't it more a problem that students are failing. So, and I guess it's a byproduct. If you're failing, it's probably cause you're not turning up to lectures. But... I like the style though, I like the design. So cool. That was cool. Yeah. I, I'd be like rank this lecture. Like what was interesting about this lecture of Bagba? So it's kind of like, you know, when you do a live stream, you can see, uh, not a live stream. You, yeah. A live stream, but for, um, I think it was in Periscope or Twitter where like you'll see loads of hearts or no hearts. It might be funny to kind of like do that in a lecture, like see wh which parts did you like about the lecture? Which parts did you not like that would make people pass if the lectures were actually like interesting and decent and engaging. Like I'll make people turn up. Right. What were we on? Yellow, right? Blue. I've passed the hour mark. It's cool. Right. I'm interested in this. We're, we're building a, per ah, the video is unavailable. We're building a personal branding fellowship for Gen Z. Interesting.
50 life lessons I learned about creativity. Well, wrong one. This one. So uh, as you can see, like all of these build space projects can be completely varied. You, you will have probably seen things about poetry, stuff about creating music. This is now about like 50 life lessons, uh, which are basically uh, 50 essays that she's going to do. So exploring creative process, compile into a list of lessons. Cool. So like structures to help write. It's a good positive feedback. I want to just see the, so again, if you're not familiar, um, at the very, very start, it's a case of coming up with an idea and publicizing that idea, uh, publishing the idea by just creating one of these like graphics. And you can see it's blue because she's in the blue team, or whatever the blue team was called. Uh, so 50 life lessons I learned about creativity. I've used exploring creative. I'm sharing a blog of what I've learned. So others can be inspired to explore their creativity too. Yes. So the problem here is basically um, increasing a sense of creativity. So people might be like frustrated that they want to go beyond or like expand or increase their creative abilities. However, I assume, or, or somebody might feel that they're not creative, but I, I would say like build this into schools. I hope that this literally goes into kind of like a workshop or you bake it into like um, a kid's class. Yeah, so this, they're saying, like, um, specifically, how does this creativity, like, what type of creativity is it for musicians or is it for everybody? And also people don't always like reading stuff, which makes sense. Wow. Into a book. This is cool. This is cool. I want to pause here. Rip, is it rips? Was it rips? I think it says rips there, right? Rips. Mm. Rips Substack. Ugh. Okay. Rips Substack com. Oh, here we go. Cool. I just said, I'm not interested in that first one. This is it. Okay. I know, I know. I just want to see if there's some, like, Okay, so these look like more generic articles. I want to see specifically this. Oh, cool. So it was created off transcripts from her video content and um, and their podcast. Uh, oh, but then I also created it from scratch. I 
I'd love to see where this actually is, but I guess she's going to create a create a um, book of it. Yeah, so great idea, helping people to become like uh, unlock their creativity. It would be awesome if this was a course that was embedded into schools, and a course that would. It's kind of like an Airbnb experience type thing. Like you do this experience where you unlock your creativity, but why? Like, I'm not sure if you'd get people. Well, I guess you do like creative writing, creative writing courses, right? That's a thing. And if you could build it into like a weekend, you could could have. Um, there's this painter guy that I know on um, Instagram. He paints with using this bucket with holes in it and spirals it over his art is canvas while the canvas is spinning. I think all of it's like really inspiring and creative and cool just for creativity's sake. Um, and he did this weekend in the woods somewhere where you would watch him paint live and do a live canvas uh, with the spinning paints on this like uh, board. Um, but also chances are you could do it yourself. So like, if you could build a yes, cool, great, a book course, yes. But could you build like a weekend where you're like expanding your creativity expand your creative horizons and it'd be for people maybe you get people just like straight out of university or college or wherever they don't really know what they're doing so you help them expand their creative horizons and um helps them kind of like utilize that in whatever they do so you might have a graphic designer that comes on board or you might have a writer or you might have somebody that's into poetry or music and you would have it generic enough that everybody would be able to utilize it because obviously some of the feedback is like who like what type of creativity is this helping um so yeah expanding creative horizons it's a weekend all your food are covered and all your accommodation is covered and you get to do this content i think that'd be a really cool like iteration of like the next step um to it like switch off and unlock from uh unlock from life switch off and like you know step away from all the intensities of stuff go into nature and then you do these this workshop which is a three-day thing in some forests in some woods where you do this uh unlocking or unleashing your creativity thing that's how i do actually with that so somebody we know runs like a camp and whether or not they could do collaborations with writing camps or creative clubs yeah so they'd advertise the space be like hey you can come stay here to do your creative camp or your creative club or whatever. right red i'll do this as the final one because i need to go and eat some dinner okay i'm just gonna go random okay i was gonna go random i was gonna be like i'm randomly gonna stop when my mouse stops i stopped here and i was like ai business lawyer cool like that makes sense great idea i'm sure it's going to be good but it's too it's too like it's too obvious as an idea so designing and 3d printing mushroom lumps this is more crazy again the hardware life i'll turn the captions on just in case the audio is not working Okay, captions aren't working. Okay. So did a corporate job, did a corporate job and quit because she's feeling really anxious. Oh, it's, oh, okay, sorry. Quit corporate job to become an artist, then feeling a bunch of anxiety and failing. Fear and stuck, procrastination. Okay, sometimes when you're trying to create something, it's like you realize that your environment isn't the right environment an opt the optimum environment for you to create. So in doing in trying to tidy a flat or whatever or apartment and 
she started to feel a sense of joy return and creativity return to be like, oh, make this space really nice. So then I will be able to achieve the thing that I want to achieve, which is basically become an artist or output artist and, uh, or create pieces of art and just really realize lighting is important. 3d printing mushroom lamps. It makes you feel like magic exists. Mood five. Mm. Mm. I like that. She feels nervous and stuff, but she takes the energy, takes the nervous energy, like the anxious energy and creates. Mm. I like that. It's kind of like, um, again, love that it's a hardware, love that it's 3D printing. Um, it's always challenging. It's always more interesting to see those things because it's super easy to build a web, oh, quote unquote, right? Super easy to build a website in comparison. So that's cool. And then I think um, if, if that mushroom could essentially do some sort of, um, you know, those lights that like fade into different colors. So what happens if it's like, yeah, cool, you can turn it on and off. What happens if you're having a particular like dump of anxiety or a dump of like, um, stress, could you push the mushroom, tap it and it jumps into like a transient, like whether or not it plays sound. And then it basically projects from the top of the mushroom or like beams the light of like a swirl, kind of like a lava lamp, you know, how looking at a lava lamp, like calms you down. Could she blend it in? So it's kind of like a therapeutic, especially with people that, that um, sometimes have too much stimulant um, too much stimulation or they go into a room with, with lights to kind of like calm them down. Could that mushroom be something that you could take anywhere into any environment, which creates a calming environment because it has one, these like blues and purples and greens kind of like, like light swirls. And it could have like audio on and off of just like, I mean, I've, I've started to hear about brown noise. I didn't know about brown. I know about white noise, but I didn't know about brown noise. Like, could it, either produce something like that or maybe it's just a speaker i don't, I don't know but um yeah cool so we're at the end i've finally done my review of a bunch of ideas from um season five of build space it's really sad to see them go but i hope that this this approach i think has nailed it because now all these ideas are here out in the wild yeah some of these ideas might not go anywhere, but the individuals creating these ideas have been inspired by the one idea to maybe make a, a, an improved iteration to make another idea that's more kind of like scratching the edge or more fulfilling. And um, again, like this whole season five or the whole season thing in itself is a creativity journey or a kind of like unblocking journey of like unblocking if you kind of overanalyzing things and, and so forth. So I, I think it's a really, really cool, a really cool um, thing. Like it's just dope. So I'm very inspired by how could you build your own local version of this? Uh, so in a particular area, um, you could, you could do this stuff um, again, all remotely and have like the whole competition thing at the end. Um, yeah. And then, so the ideas that I've written down, I, th I, I think the, the top, the most interesting kind of like idea was the helping with addictions. And I think my iteration on top of that person's like first iteration would be like, could you do it in groups, like the accountability factor? Um, and then the, the, ra the random motivation speech, could you <laughs> create a bot that creates a motivation speech kind of reminds me of that YouTube guy that was like, literally had a video of himself. Um, what did he say? He had some like tagline, but like shut up and get up or so, some, some sort of like shut up and go to the gym or something like, or stop moaning and go to the gym. Like something like that. He'd literally record himself doing the same 
statement. So if you're if you're scrolling in your feed and then you see that thing, or like get off social media and you're just saying the same thing all the time, um, like that's a clever thing. So could you have something that could generate uh, that kind of content for you, motivational content? And then the the camps, the creativity camp. I think if she was able to make that into a book, then create it into an experience. Wouldn't that like be the epitome of like the creativity, like creativity sometimes is that like experience thing. And you'd have a bunch of mushroom lights around. So on that note, I hope you've enjoyed me scrolling through. I really hope that this audio stuff works out. Otherwise it'll be a bunch of dead part, dead um, audio bits. Um, and yeah, check out sage.buildspace.so slash demos and um, get inspired, be inspired by this stuff um, to um, either use their products buy their products um, follow them or be inspired for your own idea, your own problem solving uh, thing. And until next time, shine bright like a brand. I was going to say, keep hammering those nails, but that's dull stop stuff. Uh, but yeah, I'll talk to you later. Bye for now.